talk about playing consistently uh, over, over the season uh, per game, two halves. You had Santa Barbara where you wanted them, uh, then gave up a late 18 to two run in right. uh, the second half. Uh, you know, are outside of that, are you seeing more consistent play with you guys in two halves? Oh, we had a great, we had a great run where we won five of six games all on the road. Um, I think that that was uh, probably a signature month for us, December, the ability to show that we could play both defensively and offensively. And that led us to some big victories against Santa Clara, Northeastern, Fort Wayne, winning the conference opener in Hawaii. We were able to defend and score in two halves. And I thought we did a great job, actually, for three quarters of the game. We had about an eight-minute period that I think we really ran out of some gas, both emotionally, physically. Um, a little bit of a toll, I think, from our, our road trips. Um, got a couple guys with some strep throat right now. We got a couple guys with some uh, bumps, bruises, and uh, fingers, and uh, everything else. But it's, it's part of the season that we know we're happening. So yesterday, we took it easy a little bit, tried to rest and recover a little bit. Uh, a couple guys went down to the health center, get on some penicillin and different things. So uh, clearly trying to fight that. You know, this will be our, our eighth and ninth game on the road out of 10. So it'll be nine out of 10 games. It's just a, it's the nature of uh, how the conference started off with our first trip. Um, we will be in the state of California for the next 13 games, I believe it is. And that is music to our ears. So we'll have a couple in California. You know, we have, six, we have 16 conference games. And uh, we've, we've finished two of them. So at one and one, we have 14 conference games and then hopefully three Big West conference postseason games. So the, the dream of dream is to stay in the state of California for uh, the next 17 games and then take a flight to the tournament. Coach, the uh, seven game road trip, uh, I mean, how, how how was it? Was you know, did you guys enjoy your Christmas? Did you did you guys bond? Was, was it a good time? Well, um, unfortunately, most road trips are measured by whether you had success or not. And I was happy most of that road trip as we were able to um, uh, win quite a few games. We lost the first game of the road trip to Fresno State, and then won a couple, and then lost to the number three team in the nation, Gonzaga, and then came back and won uh, four in a row. Uh, and, and so those four victories in a row have, have, have really helped our confidence on the road. I think that we're a confident team going into the Long Beach State game. An excellent team. Um, I think they might have a 20, I'm not sure, but you, you guys are great at finding those stats. Of how many home game, conference home game winning streak? I know that they've gone a couple of years in a row without losing a conference game at home. And uh, probably a 90% winning percentage at home in, in the pyramid. And that's our opponent Thursday night. The, the, that's, the, that's the foe we had to face. But the confidence that we have is that we're capable of defending and rebounding. And if we can uh, uh, generate some perimeter scoring, we're, we're pretty effective on the road if we can hit a couple shots from the perimeter. Uh, talking about Long Beach, I, I, I might be wrong here, but Mike Caffey, mm -hmm. uh, he's, who, who, who do you plan to uh, stick him? And how do you plan to slow him down? Well, with Mike, uh, he's an outstanding scorer and a leader, point guard, leader, senior. They've got five seniors on their team that are scoring and playing and are older and, and uh, very, very confident. Mike's one of the guys that we will probably throw multiple defenders at him. We'll start with one guy, move to another. Our rotations change. We'll get some length. We'll get some strength. We'll get some athleticism on him, different guys rotating on him. And what we've seen is that two teams uh, he played against, both Irvine, uh, he scored 28 against, and then uh, the other night against UC Davis. He's going to get 20 to 25, up to 30 points. He's, he's quick. He's clever. He touches the ball every time. And so it really got to do is, is try to make his shots difficult, but at the same time uh, rebound and defend the other guys on the team that, that can go get 10, 15, 20. They, I mean, they've got a, a high major talent as a sixth man now, Tyler Lamb, who can come in and get 20, 25 points. So we're, we're as much concerned with the other guys on their team as you are with Caffey and his explosive ability. Uh, coach, again, CSUN, you, you know, Bennett matched up against Alan Williams. Uh, he's, I, I assume he's the one who's going to go up against uh, Maxwell against CSUN? Uh, to be quite honest, I don't know much about CSUN right now. I've seen him play uh, uh, briefly on other scout tapes, but um, as the, we have an assistant coach that, that's the lead scout for that, and he's already watching that tape, and I, I won't have a chance to know much about them until Friday morning uh, after the game, and I'll concentrate on matchups and how that goes. But we're pretty, you know, old school. Most teams, most coaches are going to say, my time and energy has been 
primarily primarily dedicated to what's going on at Long Beach State. Sure. So then, as far as how Bennett performed uh, against Allen Williams, do you like his development throughout the season and kind of how he's coming into his own? But I think the best part about Brian is he had a very good freshman year. He was challenged his sophomore year to try to produce the numbers that he did, and people were co were concentrating on him. I think what he's doing now is realizing that he even when someone is is digging out and helping him and on him he's able to impose his will. He had some great moves where he, had, he actually had counter moves. It wasn't just his left shoulder jump hook, but he had left shoulder and counter moves to people taking away his pet move and uh, rebounded well. And he got a second double-double of his career. And he's been, he's been uh, knocking on the door of a double-double. Uh, he's had nine rebounds, I believe, four games. And we kept saying, well, what's with you? Afraid to get that 12 points and 10 rebounds. So uh, he's, he's really dialed in. He's a junior. He's older, smarter, tougher hungrier, more focused um, than he, had, he was his sophomore year, and we expect that from a, a junior. I also like the development of Joel All, which had a double-figure game for us, and we're going to need Joel as team concentrate on David Nawab, our leading scorer. And now I think Brian's going to see some double teams. I think Brian, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Long Beach State and, and um, uh, Northridge both zone some and also double Brian as he's becoming a consistent, effective, low-post scorer. Up, JD. Um, just to, to play on a question you were kind of talking about mm -hmm. perimeter uh, offense for you guys, and then you also mentioned some of the senior leaders for Long Beach. Are those some of those perimeter defenders? I mean, how good are they at defending the outside? I think Long Beach is excellent defending the outside the perimeter. They, they're long, they're quick, they're experienced. Um, you know, for us, we've kind of been able to identify our trigger point when we when we have a guy who can step up and knock down those perimeter shots. When we were at Fort Wayne, Mike Bolden knocked down 20 points, a 5-8 three-point shooting. We had a, a nice victory on the road over there. Uh, Reese Morgan steps up in overtime and at the end of the game and knocks down some threes against Hawaii. And then we looked at the game uh, against Santa Barbara. We, we controlled that game because of our defense. Our offense never was never really rolling against Santa Barbara. Neither team could generate any offense. It was 23 to 20, 23 to 20 at halftime, if I don't recall correctly. Um, a three-point lead, and, and it was old, you know, looked like a football score. And so as we kind of continued down that road, it was like the first team that really hit a couple threes in a row, kind of broke up. We, we were able to kind of scrape a 10-point lead, and neither team really had ever had any great flow um, I think both teams are really good defensively. I think our conference is really good defensively. I think there's some really sound, sound defensive concepts, athletes, and, and uh, approaches to the game. And so I think that we're, we're hoping that when we generate that perimeter scoring, then I think with, with Bennett inside and having a, a good point guard play, the way we take care of the basketball, we're able to hit. You know, I think our, uh, there's probably a stat out there we're looking at where if we're able to hit five or six three-pointers versus three or four, you know, it's, a, it's quite a bit different uh, team if we can hit, hit from the perimeter. Now, we hope we can win some games without having to hit from the perimeter, but it's a lot easier to uh, score 60, 65 points and win than it is 50, 55 points. Yeah, um, Joel, you mentioned him as well. He hit a couple three-pointers. He made one at Hawaii as well, and he mm -hmm. was shooting a lot early on in the season without having much success. He's continued shooting. It seems like it's getting a little bit better. Right. It, um, do you imagine he's in, during the conference season, his shooting percentage from outside is just going to go up and up and well, up? Well, I think that Joel, is, he experienced his first five or ten games as a starter. You know, Brian's, uh, Brian started as a freshman and sophomore. playing like a junior, scoring on a regular basis. David Noabo was scoring. Uh, well in the, in the preseason uh, because he, he had a tired sophomore year as a starter, was comfortable. You remember Joel was behind Chris Eversley. He's never been a starter, never played a lot of consistent minutes in his life. And so I, I always say it takes five to ten games for somebody just to identify what their role might be on a given team. And I, I see Joel emerging in, in that role, playing with more confidence um, as this year continues on. I really like his development, what he's going on. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see David um, – you know, knock down some perimeter shots. You know, right now he, he's still recovering from a, a, a wrist surgery. David was shooting the ball really well in the spring and into the summer. And he, when he had the wrist surgery on his shooting hand, you know, he wasn't, he, he wasn't exactly, uh, you know, Kyle Ottister out there beforehand. I get that. But he was hitting shots before the surgery. And over the last two months, his wrist is slowly healed and he's got a little more flexibility. And we were working on it yesterday. And 
Um, you know, he knows he'll have to eventually knock down a perimeter shot, be more consistent all around the perimeter. And we're not talking him shooting three three pointers a night, but lining up a couple 15 to 18 footers, 20 footers, and knocking them down. Uh, in particular, Joel's three point shooting, though, it seems like it's part of the game plan as, as much as he's freely shooting. It, it, um, is it going? I mean, is that going to be a weapon? I guess for you. Yeah, we, we think it? we think Joel Joel's perimeter scoring complements David's driving. You know, and if, if 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 Joel is just inside all the time and doesn't stretch the floor a little bit, then the court court gets too crowded. I mean, you have a four and a five man both standing in the key. David's never going to be able to get to the the hoop if if Joel doesn't stretch. We call it stretch four. You know, um, Anthony Silvestri coming off the bench has struggled shooting it all year. Um, he had a game against Cal where he knocked down some. And so there's another guy that we hope that could loosen up a little bit, knock down a couple, and get some other perimeter contribution from Joel, Anthony, obviously Reese Morgan off the bench. We expect him to, to help us a little bit with that. Even Ridge coming off the bench. You know, we, we showed Ridge some stats, how much higher his shooting percentage is off the catch versus the dribble. And that's something that we got to get him into getting rid of the ball and getting back and being a three-point threat after that. Um, how is the team feeling at this point in the season with like their successes, maybe not as much, like on both ends of the spectrum? Well, I think the best part is that we have a really emotionally stable team. Um, you know, we had some, we had a great run where we won three or four games on the road, felt good about what we were doing, had a great win at Hawaii in overtime. The locker room was excited. But within an hour or two, they knew that it was one win. It was only worth one win, and we had to get up the next morning at 5 o'clock and catch a flight and fly five hours and drive three hours. So, you know, you, you kind of put that in perspective is that it's a long season, and we, we keep on trying to say that the, the critical part of the year, win or lose, is get better. So when we had a big win in Hawaii and had to come back, we kind of put it in perspective and had to get better, and we knew that it was a big game against Santa Barbara. Obviously, it's an emotional dagger when you lose a game um, that you had a lead in and you're at home and you feel like you disappointed your fans. But that should only be an emotional dagger for, again, 12 to 24 hours, and you got to move on and you got to leave that behind. You can't carry the wins. They're only, they're only, it's only one win when you win, and you, you, can't, you can't carry the losses. It's just one loss when you lose. And so that's our theory has been that way since I've been here is it's, okay, it's a game. Okay, and so if we carry that with us, we're not going to be ready for the next game. Um, I'll never forget, and I think now people realize that there weren't, there weren't many believers in the camp when we lost to Santa Barbara at home on senior night prior to going to the Big West tournament. And we lost by 15 points. And we turned around within uh, five days' time and, and beat Han Santa Barbara handily and won the Big West tournament, went to the NCAA tournament. And that was because I, wasn't, I was hurt, but I wasn't depressed. And our team isn't – you're hurt by what happens, but you – you can't be depressed. We have more games to play. We have eight weeks of the season left here, um, and they're all conference games, and there's no, there's no interruption between that. So we know that it's an emotional stamina that it takes to, to, to take the highs and lows and uh, continue this. So I, I like our team. I call them the Tim Duncans. We've got a bunch of guys that look pretty happy when they're happy and a little sad, but they move on pretty quickly. And, and that's a pretty good quality. If you look at San Antonio Spurs' success, is they're uh, old, mature, consistent people that uh, get too, too emotional, but don't make very good decisions. Yesterday's analogy for them was there's a reason they don't let doctors operate on their own children. It's too, too close to home. It's too emotional to them. You know? So we, we want our guys to think a little bit more about, you know what, good, good surgeons uh, don't, aren't that emotional. Good teams aren't that emotional. You don't, you don't want to be that involved in it. And Santa Barbara game is like operating your own child, okay? So that's one child and one surgery you don't do. You know, don't take the game as a victory that's greater than one win or a loss that's greater than one loss. Thank you, guys. Just one last question. Oh, Very sorry. Short question. What will it take? Again, you kind of touched on this, but again, what's it going to take to beat Long Beach State in the pyramid? Well, I think the... The, the key for us is not to lose our identity. We have to, to, we have to number one, we are number one in the nation in taking care of the basketball. We only had eight turnovers the other night against Santa Barbara and put us in position to win. Number two is that we're the number one defensive team in the conference. We have to be a team that takes care of the basketball. We have to be a team that defends. We have to be a team that rebounds. If we do those three things, we are in the game. We need, then need to make shots. <laughs> so to be in the game is, 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 is Cal Poly formula. Take care of the ball, defend, and rebound. To win the game 
is then score some buckets and, and get some perimeter play, get some consistency from the perimeter play. So I'm feeling really good. I love our team's identity on the defensive side of the ball and transition and taking care of the ball. We're a developing team. If you look at our practice plan today, in the two hours we spend time together, uh, I would say two-thirds that time is dedicated to continuing to develop our offensive flow and our shooting touch from the perimeter. So ultimately that will be our, um, our flair that really explodes. I think when we hit shots, our defense goes from very good to great, and our offense explodes up there, and we feel like we can beat anybody on any given night. Four for 22 from long range. Were they just exhausted? I don't think exhausted, but certainly not, uh, not fresh. You know, uh, I, I didn't get the sense that anybody felt like we were at a, a at 60 percent level, but we certainly weren't at 90 to 100 percent level. And uh, you got to have legs, and you have focus, and you got to have energy. Um, but there's no excuses. Everybody else in the conference is going to have to travel to Hawaii and back. Everybody else is going to have to play games. Everybody else has to, you know, deal with uh, injuries and fingers and strep throat and um, all those little things that go on on a team. Every team ha has those setbacks. So it's just a matter who can continue to move on. Um, after those setbacks, and that's what I think we take great pride in, is the journey. Um, the journey back to the tourney. Isn't that the NCAA uh, logo right now? Or their time? All right, thank you, Josh. Thank you. Hey, guys.